Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. John Browner, Jason Lawhead, also known as Browner and Lawhead, your favorite show from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. on the Mightier 1090, Monday through Wednesday. What a show we have for you guys today. We got so much on the menu. Crazy game last night. Have someone been exposed? Mark Davis is covering for his poor coaching hire. We'll dig into that. Joseph Sy is covering for what I believe to be a righteous way of standing up for his organization. And apparently we are all in trouble, and I'll explain that. But, but first, you can always catch Browner and Lawhead right here on the Mighty Air 1090 and on YouTube at Kaplan and Crew on the iTunes Podcast Store and on the uh, YouTube, the UW Tube. Jason Lawhead, worldwide comedian, famous man, probably the next uh, Saturday Night Live host, will be performing in Las Vegas over Thanksgiving weekend. What's up, Jason? What up, man? And, 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 and I forgot the most important thing. Table giver. Table giver. Yeah. Yeah. Got our table, too. So uh, I'm in, like, half of the assembly process. I'm going to get to that later. Now, after when are you going to post this new table? When are you going to post, post it? When it's all, uh, when it's all, you don't want to see anything while it's happening because I'm no, a very impatient, frustrated, you know, guy. it'd be a lot of uh, FCC violations were coming out of my mouth putting it together but it's a nice table and uh when i get it all propped up i'll get a little screenshot we can put it on the show and uh yeah very happy and then we also got a we also got a coffee like a little coffee station table come we're gonna have a little coffee station we bought a new espresso little espresso machine kind of a cool little thing with the grinder and everything yeah so um, yeah, being in Europe, he, being in Europe and being all right, we were just we were just like, you know what? Uh, forget this, like, you know. And I got a Cuban coffee maker, and we got a French press. We do it as What's right. What's the difference? We do it as right as you can. Well, Cuban coffee maker is like a little percolator. It's like a little, almost looks like a campfire type of coffee pot. <clears throat> okay. And you put the uh, espressos in a uh, espresso ground in a little chamber here. And then that sits in the bottom part, which is all the water. And then you screw the top part on and then you put it on like a medium to medium high heat. And after about and it slowly comes up. So you put it on like a cold stove, medium high. And as the heat gets to it and increases, it, it percolates that water, hot water. That's room temperature up through a little tube that then uh D disperses the coffee grounds and then there's a little screen on the top part that catches the ground so then it just becomes co coffee and you hear it bubble and it's great and so i really like nice. my coffee that way and then we have the french press so we don't have like a coffee pot or a coffee maker or anything like that we do it that way and that's as good as you can do it without having your own espresso machine with the grinder so we've upgraded after our trip to europe we, we were i was just like you know what <laughs> We're finally doing this. Like as much as I love how we have coffee, I want to ground my own beans and I want an espresso machine. So it's coming and we got that. So that's exciting. I'll, I'll show you the whole new kitchen setup once we get it all done. Oh, well, I'm glad you're back from Europe yeah. and I'm glad you're kind of checking some things off your list yeah. because we may all be in trouble soon. <laughs> I don't know where yeah. you've been today. Normally we kind of cover sports on this show in a very lighthearted way more of a very topical way, but sometimes real world things happen and we just have to address them just in case you haven't heard them because you guys get busy and, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, Russia, it is alleged that Russia fired a rocket into Poland, hitting a farm and killing two people. If you don't know the details about the Ukrainian and Russian war, I don't blame you. It's, it's not that complicated, but it's a lot to de delve into. If you have a full going life for something that's happening completely on the other side of the world. But Poland is a member of NATO, the NATO alliance, which we, the United States of America, along with all the other world powers, are a member of it. This is including Russia. This is a violation of said agreement in NATO. And what this could lead to is literally World War Three. Now, as much as that sounds like something funny or hyperbolic and an exaggeration no this is kind of how those things start so i'm not here to scare anybody just to inform you you should probably look into this and read because this could get ugly real fast yeah i mean uh it's scary right like um you know part of poland is you know 
you know, Russia's been known to want that back too, you know, from the yep. old Soviet Union days. They were supposed to be next. Yeah. So, uh, man, you just hope that, uh, I mean, it's not an accident. I don't know what else you can say, really, other than you hope that uh, we can handle this in a way that doesn't uh, involve a all-out world war. But, you know, there's uh, been one world war. There's been two. I mean, it feels like Third time's the a charm. Third has to come sometime, right? Um, so let's hope not. And man, I mean, me and my wife are literally just in the last couple of days looking to pull the trigger on a on a on a vacation next year, flying in early October for a week, doing a week oh, in boy. like Switzerland and like the like maybe <laughs> Munich or Milan, depending on where we go from Zurich. Um and really, like, because the, those are the best times to, to fly there and, and see that part of the country at, at uh, airline. And we were like, literally. so I may have to see how this plays out before I purchase those tickets. Play it by ear? Yeah, I'm going to be like, do you have a war refund or anything? Do you have a World War refund? <laughs> if, like, you know, I know I can, <laughs> like, rebook at, like, no penalty just to change a fare, but is there's got to be a World War refund. Please. And as a as a as a two stone joke to to go along with your World War refund joke, the Me Too crowd. Now's the time. Now's the time when the draft starts. This thing is fifty fifty. Okay, the the feminist, your turn. World War One fought by men. World mm -hmm. War Two fought by men. World War Three fought by everyone. Mm -hmm. The hims, oh, yeah. hers, them's, days. Y'all could come too. Everybody, let's get on. Let's, let's get in the plane and fly on over there because, woo, we about to see who the real feminists are now. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm just saying. I ain't saying. I'm just saying. But <laughs> back to sports. Back to sports. Um, Today, Mark Davis did something that is only required if you're going to fire someone, especially in football. You have to give them a vote of confidence. So before you fire them, it's kind of how it goes. Jim Irsay did this before he fired Frank Wright. And here we are with a vote of confidence. The Broncos GM has also given a vote of confidence to their head coach, Nathaniel Hackett. And now we see the Raiders doing the exact same thing. Uh, 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 Young Davis doing it with this Josh McDaniels, this failure who they've hired. This vote of confidence means nothing to me other than in that building, they're hearing what people are saying outside of it. The old vote of confidence is the number one sign that we hear people outside this building and it's getting in. There would be no need for you to offer the vote of confidence if no one in the building was listening and everybody was locked in. So is this a bad sign that this is out and they're speaking about it? Or do you think this is something that should have been done by Mark Davis? Well, I mean... Or what? What else is he going to say right now? I mean, it's either it's either it's a complete guillotine, or it's that at this point. And <clears throat> you know, uh, in the Broncos situation, a little different with the sense that you know it's all new kind of there, um, other than some young defensive players that they've had in place. But you know, head coach, wide or you know, quarterback, offense, all of it. Um, you know, so. You know, it almost feels like the Broncos have a, a a way to cut loose quicker, in my opinion, because of the said Russell Wilson situation and how unique it is. Um, but I mean, it's either total guillotine or we back our coach. And I don't know where else the Raiders would go if they were to fire. Um, you know, they already did this. They already did this <laughs> last year and then brought in a uh, – um, interim coach and they did it with a guy that they signed a long-term deal to that they were so committed to and they were so happy about getting and then this is just John mcdaniel is just gruden 2.0 and half the size and half the age and now it's just you know it's here before you know it within a year it's it's happening again so i don't think they have any choice right now uh davis has to kind of sit there and either convince himself enough to convince the fan base that this is all going to be all right. But come, like I said, at the end of the year, if they're, you know, six and 11 or five and 12, I, I don't know how you can just sit there and go, oh, all right, guys, 
that was a good growing learning because it's not a learning. They're not learning anything. And it isn't some kind of year where it's like, okay, well, let's just try to, you know, put something together with a first year coach. No, this is These ain't a, young players either. This is a returning playoff team that added, you know, perhaps the best wide receiver in football, at least the most sought after wide receiver Correct. in football. Um, you know, this isn't some feel good about any other record than 10 and seven. Really, at the end of the day, th th this isn't a kind of season like, I mean, now if you go nine and eight with this start, sure, you feel great. I mean, two and seven. OK, but I'm saying from the beginning of the season. But, yeah, I mean, I guess nine and eight, maybe eight and nine from where they're at right now, they can feel good about, you know, entering in the off season. But we'll see how much of that even means like, did they really play good football, winning some games on the way out or were they just in situations against teams that it didn't really matter to that other team. And, you know, the Raiders were playing with any house money. And so sometimes a strong finish isn't really a strong finish. It's just, right. it's just sometimes you just win some games that other teams aren't playing in, or you might play down, you know, an opponent plays down to you, whatever. So there's a lot of things to evaluate here, but I mean, I you think know, it's his only play. You know who played great at the end of the year last year? Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. How's that looking? Right. Like the, I love the end of it happens in every sport, specifically basketball yes. and football are my two favorite sports where the end of the year success, everyone believes it translates. It never does. It literally never does. When people turn off the light, it's off. And a lot of times in these leagues, at the end of the season, guys turn off the light. Right. They're ready to go on vacation. They're ready to heal their bodies. Their, their mind is outside of the game of football because they're out of the playoff picture. I, I don't see this team winning five games, and that and that is an utter travesty. If they get to eight games, that's a win. If they sure. get to eight games, Josh McDaniels deserves a lot of credit if this team gets to eight wins. I don't see it happening. I don't understand what the 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 confusion is. If because I know Mark Davis isn't a rich guy. He's not a, a he's not like uh the owner of the Rams. Stan Kroenke, he's not like the owner of the, the Broncos who are the Walmart people. Because for this conversation, I think the people who you can draw a real close correlation to are the Denver Broncos and the Oakland Raiders. The Denver Broncos and the Oakland Raiders were in the exact same position this offseason. They had openings at coach. They had openings at GMs. They both hired new people for both those positions. They both made really bad hires. The Broncos hired somebody because they at the head coach because they thought they were going to get Aaron Rodgers. And so they literally hired his quarterback coach to come and be the head coach because they thought they were getting Aaron Rodgers. And it did not happen. And you can see that Nathaniel Hackett is not a head coach. You can see that their general manager is probably on the outs, just like the head coach is on the outs, because you have a new owner with a lot of money and not a lot of patience. The reason why I think Josh McDaniels will survive is because uh, Mark Davis didn't have that kind of money. Now, he got out of – he got from under the Gruden contract because the NFL screwed that pooch so bad, Gruden's just going to get his money from the NFL when he sues them. But that was a $100 million contract for 10 oh, years. Yeah. For 10 yeah. years. So he can afford to cut the check – or you would hope to be an NFL franchise, you can afford to cut a guy a check and have him go away – and get a job somewhere else and, and take a little bit off the top of that. So the vote of confidence does nothing for me, but assure me that Mark Davis is hearing that he made a bad hire. He's hearing the rumors and speculation on the outside about what's going on inside the locker room. And Josh McDaniels inability to relate to grown men who don't have to listen to him if they don't think he's correct. And I think that is his problem. He's not Bill Belichick. You did not hire Bill Belichick. You hired Bill Belichick's errand boy thinking he was Bill Belichick. And it has failed you once, and it has failed you twice, and it has failed you multiple times over. See his list of guys outside of Mike Brable who got jobs. Yeah. I mean, regarding the Raiders, just to go back like with that, with how they finish, I mean, they, the next two or three, four games are very like winnable uh, as far as the opponents and, and who they're playing. Um, and if they can't take three or four of the next – you know, Denver, 
Seattle, who's yeah, oh. beatable, totally beatable. I mean, obviously this oh. team is playing above their head, but don't tell me that a Raiders team isn't more talented on paper than Seattle. The, Ra- Listen, this the, 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 the Chargers Broncos. and the Raiders with the way those teams are t- playing, or the Chargers and the Rams. So out of these next four, if the Raiders are, are, are come out one and three, I mean, this is a this is a team going in the the hole, right? Like you almost kind of feel like maybe a change at head coach or maybe a change at something could bolster the 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 Broncos somehow. But if if the Raiders don't flip this switch in the next four, it's like they're buried in a hole that you know radar can't even find. I mean, these guys are in trouble. I will tell you that. <laughs> The next game between the Broncos and the Raiders is the You're Fired Bowl. Yeah, so you, this Sunday. Loses, yeah, yeah, this Sunday, the You're yep. Fired Bowl is taking place wherever it's taking place. Because whichever in one Denver. of these two teams in Denver, the You Fired Bowl at Mount High Stadium or whatever it's called, the loser of this game, I don't care how it happens, you're done. You're done. You're done, man. You're done. This is the perfect time for those two teams to be playing each other. And it's the perfect time to kind of – Address this Joseph Sy situation because I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. Okay. I know you don't either. Okay. No, I don't. So Joseph Sy enlisted the for those of you who don't know, Kyrie Irving has been suspended for basically retweeting a anti-Semitic video and then failing to apologize. The Nets then came down on him with a list of demands that he had to do to get back on the team. And I'm here to tell you, as a black man, I don't have a problem with what's happening. It doesn't make me an Uncle Tom. It makes me a person who is aware of Kyrie Irving's history. That's all it does. And for all these people out here jumping on Joseph side and jumping on black people for saying that, oh, Kyrie Irving should have been suspended. And this list of demands, oh, this is now, oh, it's too much. No, it's not. Because this isn't in Kyrie's first issue. Today's his first situation. This is like his fourth situation in two years with the same team. So if I'm somewhere causing this much dysfunction, if I'm on a job and I'm a no call, no show, and then now I show up, I'm offending my customers, you got to go. You got to go. And so they, the NBA has been suspending him indefinitely because I think Joseph Sy is trying to get Kyrie to quit the team. I, I don't think this is about whether they think he's anti-Semitic because I don't think that they think he's anti-Semitic. They just don't want him around, man. Because well, this, this, this isn't the first thing, and this, it won't be the last thing, by the way. He's, he's only got a one-year deal. This won't be the last thing he does. Yeah. See, I, I think that at the end of the day, no matter who's right or who's wrong or whatever goggles you want to look through, and you just said, you know, Joseph's side, they want him to quit the team. I think it's because they already felt that he's quit the team. And I think that they feel yeah. deep down, deep down, all of that management, they really feel Kyrie quit this team three times, three controversies <laughs> ago. Okay, three crazy Kyries ago. OK, they, right. they 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 deep down and it only just keeps reinforcing everything Kyrie does as a bad teammate, as a bad player, as a as, meaning as a bad player to the coach. OK, you have to be not just a great teammate to your teammates. You have to be a great player to your coach to a be, be extend that partner. You got to have that, that has to be an extension, whether you love that coach or you don't. You have to have a you have to have a player mentality to be coached right terry bradshaw and chuck Knoll hated each other but terry bradshaw knew well enough that if this team functions i have to let myself be coached by chuck Knoll, even though i don't want to or whatever and that's going to make me a great teammate to franco harris and and lynn swan and that's what made these teams so great it made talent go even above their talent because you know you can have talent but you can play below it and so I, I just think at the end of the day, you can say, let Kyrie play. And I'm all for that. But I want to see Kyrie want to play. I, I've never seen Kyrie really want to play. He wants to play some basketball. That's what he wants to do. And he wants to cash all those turn. checks. And, and it's convenient to have a stance when you know it's going to, you know, make bigger noise than the amount of game. Go look at the record, you know, they, the, the Nets have been. Without him, two years ago, without him, they put and then he came in and they lost games. The, the, the he took off and yeah, they lost to the Lakers last night. But they, I think they just kind of overlooked that one. They played really, they've played really well without Kyrie, and so I think that's where the Nets are at. They're at, you know what? He's already quit on us, and it's been reinforced. So, yeah, we want him to quit. I think it's funny that no one that wears a Nets uniform 
is speaking out on behalf of Kyrie. Now, KD said, listen, I'm not here to judge nobody, mm -hmm. blah, 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 X, Y, Z. Nobody who's going through it with Kyrie on an everyday basis in that locker room is stepping up to say, let him play. He's a tremendous talent. He can absolutely help the team. But you hit the nail on the head. He quit th th three three issues ago. He quit three. He quit back in when I, oh, I don't want to go to the bubble. He quit then. Did he you? quit. He quit during the Capitol insurrection when he was too upset to play. He quit during the COVID situation. And now you're. This is the fourth time you've had to deal in that. that by the way, that we know of. Because these guys get away with a lot of stuff that we never, we hear nothing about. And trust me, from firsthand experience, I know some of these things that these guys get away with. And if you knew them, these opinions wouldn't be formed in defense of Kyrie. So I find it unbelievably hilarious that people are defending Kyrie Irving like this is the only thing he's done for the Nets. They, if you wanted him back, all these quote-unquote list of demands would have been one thing. Listen, bro, just say you sorry, and we can, and you can, no five-game suspension. Just say you sorry. But we've done talked about this enough. Y'all know how y'all feel. We know how we feel. And we'll be back with more on the Brown and Law Show on the Mightier 1090 ESPN. Back on the second half of the show, John Browner, Jason Lawhead, Browner and Lawhead, as usual, if you miss anything, you can always head over to the iTunes podcast store and over to YouTube to watch us on your phone, see our faces, or hear our voices via podcast or the radio you're driving in your car on the Mighty 1090 ESPN. Jason Lawhead, John Browner. We were talking about the Kyrie Irving, Joseph Sy situation. We also spoke about Mark Davis coming out and giving a vote of confidence to Josh McDaniels and the fact that there may be a world war by the time we all wake up tomorrow. But <laughs> whatever. Uh, last night's Monday night football game, Jason. Mm -hmm. I can't say I'm shocked. Because I'm one of the people who were still saying that I'm not a believer in Philadelphia. And nothing I saw last night changed that. Because sometimes teams can lose a game and you go, I believe now. Because the, the way they lose, the way you lose sometimes can be very important in sports. I didn't like what I saw from them. Because mm -hmm. the number one criticism on them was, once they get behind, what can they do? And you saw last night, once they got behind, they really seem to be one-dimensional. It's like they forgot to run the football. So what was your takeaway from last night's game? Well, my takeaway from last night's game is that the watch out for the commanders. I mean, they're good. They're getting uh, chased back this this week. He hasn't been blamed for this defense. That, is crazy. defense it, that defense is good. I mean, when you look at the numbers, you know, uh, over the last however many games, even, even though, you know, before Heineke got there, they you know they lost the game, but only gave up twenty one to Tennessee. They they beat Chicago, holding them to seven. Who's been scoring some points and actually getting you know uh, some productivity from its offense? They beat Green Bay, holding them to twenty one. They beat the Colts, holding them to sixteen. They lose by three to Minnesota, the only other one loss team out there. Only give up twenty, and then they they do this to the Eagles. So the Heineke story is amazing and great, and he's won what he's three and one now as a starter, and his only loss is to. A uh, uh, you know three point loss to a seven and one Vikings team eight and one whatever they are and now he gets revenge. I mean when you look at last game with Wentz, the Philadelphia o owned Washington, right? I mean they beat mm -hmm. the heck out of them, and you see uh, you know Heineke come in there and now make an offense moving the ball, taking advantage of what the defense is giving him. Something Wentz just never did. Yeah, that, that was probably Wentz's biggest downfall as a quarterback from Philly into Indy is what he was he would just give back what the defense give gives him and Heineke's not doing that so um alarm bells for Philadelphia I don't think so right now eight no is a long way to go before you get you get beat and you know they they saw kind of a different team a team playing better than they saw him the first time with a different quarterback do I still think that there's some great eight and one team no not yet they got a lot more to prove and, and like you said getting behind is going to be something that is going to when you face that in in playoff football against playoff teams that are supposed to be in the playoffs those even get harder um to to overcome so uh but that nfc east wow i mean come on you know the command they're gonna get chase anthony back they're gonna be better they're only getting better. They're kind of like that horse hitting its stride as they make the turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're in the back of the pack, but you're kind of like, who's that, you know, who's that, you know, red horse, who's that seven horse there on the outside? He's coming hard. And so 
with the way Dallas is, could be any Dallas they they choose to be. Giants still, you know, they've got suspect you know they're just like oh daniel they're just kind of walking on eggshells uh philly vulnerable hey who knows i mean maybe washington's playing the right football at the right time they got a great coach who they've stuck to and they've committed to maybe the only thing dan snyder's done right there is staying with rivera and um letting him figure things out with the guys he's got and here they are and they're five and five and they're right in the thick of just a, a couple more wins somebody else losing and then boom there they are i what i don't yeah i hate to beat this guy but here it comes i'm not a big kind of guy man i'm really not because at multiple turns heineke had a chance to outright win that job yeah i don't think he's better than carson Wentz, but at this point i've revisited my opinion of carson Wentz, and i I just don't I, i think whatever he had is now gone but I don't think Tyler Henneke is the answer. I think Henneke gave you what a backup quarterback should give you. A backup quarterback should be able to win you two games a year. Not drive you to eight to ten wins. He should be able to give you two wins a year. One when you are not when you didn't think you were going to get him, like last night. And the other when you play a bad team and your quarterback's not out there. This guy could come in and hold the line. He didn't do anything spectacular last night. He basically did what the coaching staff asked him to do. He did the same thing Colt McCoy did for the Cardinals. Just do what we ask you to do. We will take it from here. Again, don't be Batman. Don't be Robin. Be Alfred. Mm -hmm. That's what Tyler Henneke is. He's Alfred. And that was an exceptional performance for what he can give you last night. I I don't know what they can do. This team is defensively driven. And if they struggle to run the ball, and they struggle to get big plays, I don't know what they are. They generated four turnovers last night. The Eagles had made four turnovers all year. They literally set a record through the first eight games of having the fewest turnovers in the history of the NFL, and the NFL has been played for over 70 years. So what that what that's worth, I don't know. But at a 0-0 turnover game, I don't think Washington wins that game. I mean, one of them came with a, one of the most egregious face masks I've seen in a very long time. So I, I, I watched the game. I, I look at an MVP candidate in Jalen Hurts, and I saw a guy who is limited. I saw a guy who couldn't really make the throws when you needed him to make the throws. Once no one se- – if you're not selling the play action, what really is Jalen Hurts? And I think that gets us back to a conversation of at 8-0, and where are you buying them? And I wasn't buying them at 8-0. and And after the loss I saw, this is the second time the not Redskins saw them. What happens when the Cowboys see them for a second time? And the Giants, who are probably the best, the, the best coaching job this year, mm-hmm. has been by Brian Debo. Yes. So the second time Brian Debo sees the Eagles, how is that going to look? So I, I just... And they play them back to back. Well, I know the Eagles play them back. The Eagles play the Giants, then go on the bye week and then play the Giants. So the Eagles have uh, two really winnable games coming up. I believe they've got uh, Car- or they've got Houston and Atlanta, and then they go see the Giants, go on the bye week, and come back and see the Giants, which are going to be huge games for um, for Wash or if, uh, that's for uh, Washington. Uh, those are they're, those are going to be huge games for Washington to measure up to see what they're against uh, against the Giants, especially if they can come out of these next two winnable games with wins. Mm-hmm. If they're seven and five, and then they've got the Giants a bye week, and then the Giants. But yeah, yeah, you know, Philly, not not never been really like bought in on them, but also have given them their due to be like, hey, they're eight and zero in a conference that right. that's in in the conference that's down compared to the two conferences in a whole f- season that isn't playing a lot of great football from teams we've expected to maybe see better football from yeah. and so that gave them more fuel in my opinion at 8 no but uh this game imp- like I said I I my takeaway isn't so much you know um sound the alarm bells for Philly game teams lose games i mean you know sometimes it's good just good to get that loss and not have the media hovering over an undefeated season but washington man and then with them getting chased i mean they're gonna be better and like i said it just feels like they're getting stronger and if they believe in heineke like we said there's teams out there that you don't that can win it that don't need a batman right 
they just need an Alfred. And, you know, the 49ers, there's a couple teams we've cited. Cousins, there's a couple teams out there that are good enough on the roster that could win something and go far if Alfred just makes sure that the suit's pressed and the, 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 the car is fueled up. That's it. That's it. And so I, I, I thought last night's victory by Washington was very NFL-y. Mm -hmm. And what I, mean, what I mean by that is anybody can get beat on any day in this NFL. The Texans could beat the Chiefs. Like, look at the disarray the Colts were in when they beat Kansas City. Like, it can happen. So I don't, I don't sit around looking at one win going, woo, okay, here they come. No. Unless it's like a massive, like, oh, that was a from, – from 15 minutes to zero on the clock per quarter, they serve them up. Unless it looks like that, I generally don't overreact to a win when it looks like this because this happens in the NFL – it happens to every great team in the NFL. It happens to every every bad team beats a good team, and every good team gets beat by a bad team in the NFL week after week because that's just the nature of the sport. Yeah. So somebody was going to get him at some point. The longer yeah. you go, the harder it is to, to take that loss. So it's probably good they got it now. But I, I don't I, I don't see anything changing in the cards for Philadelphia. I think they're still going to win that division. I still think the Cowboys are vastly overrated. I think the Giants are, like we said before, being coached at an extremely high level. And I think Washington, once they get Chase Young back, Ooh, their defense is Chase going Young. to look amazing. Can their offense give them anything of recognition to help that defense out? That I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I called him Chase Anthony earlier because I was blanking. But yeah, Chase Young. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, here's why I like this Washington win more than just it being a win against a team that, you know, was undefeated and bound to lose is because they finally beat a good team that they've come close to beat. And when you look at, you know, they had a four game losing streak there early in the season. And if you minus that Detroit game where Detroit just played a great game, they lost to the Eagles who are now eight and one Dallas mm -hmm. with a couple of losses, um, Tennessee at the top of their division. And then their other loss after a three game win streak was Minnesota to three points. So they were coming really close to beating some good teams and they hadn't beat really a good team yet. And I think this is a, a hallmark win for them in the season, because if they go out and do business, what they're supposed to do in the next two, go seven and five and then face New York head to head. And, you know, those are going to be the games depending on where Philly plays and where Dallas plays in these next two or three, those are going to be huge games for Washington. If they go into those games at seven to five, as well as there'll be huge games for the Giants having to play them twice in such a short time, uh, depending on what the Giants can do in the next couple of games going into those games. So that that division could come into a big just kind of crash yeah. around Thanksgiving the week after or the, the week after uh, it's, it's the week after Thanksgiving. So that first Sunday, second, third Sunday in December, that whole division could look totally different than the standings have looked pretty much all year. Did I lose you? Did I lose you? I think I lost you. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. <laughs> A little situation. That'll be edited out of the show. Gotcha. Whoops. My bad. What happened? Did you did you accidentally X out of your screen? Yeah, so dude. I, I lost you. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to do another thing and, and look up. I was trying to look up uh, uh. the record for the what i was about to say next and i completely like hit the well, wrong just, thing just and... stream it right off of that like uh whatever i said i said basically like that whole division could come to a clash there in that first or second third week of december so the idea that after let's say if the eagles drop another game the giants keep rolling the cowboys find their way i mean the cowboys have a huge test in minnesota uh, this coming weekend. So, I mean, this will kind of be a make or break for them as well. So, I the division could, by Thanksgiving, the division could either be wrapped up yeah, or be a dogfight, like you said, it could collapse on itself. Um, yeah. Also, in some news uh, breaking as well, Cooper Cup has a high ankle spray and is basically going to hit the injured reserve. I, speaking of divisions, this division is crashing at the top. The NFC uh, West is crashing at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to make of the Cardinals. 
I don't know what to make of the. I mean, I I don't. I honestly don't know what to make of the Rams. I don't think it's just a Cooper Cup injury because he was put up these gargantuan stats and they weren't they weren't tabulating into wins. I like San Francisco with the addition of 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 McCaffrey, but yeah, it still doesn't feel right. It still feel when you watch San Francisco, it still feels like there's something that they're not telling you, but you can't put your finger on it. And the Seattle Seahawks are a Geno Smith experiment that you, another guy, when you can't run the ball and you get behind, what can he really do for you? And so the, you've got a limited Jimmy Garoppolo. You've got a limited Geno Smith. And those are the guys front running with Kyler Murray, who apparently hasn't won a football game since Modern Warfare 2 came out on PlayStation 5. And in addition to that, the Rams have everybody hurt. Stafford out now, Cup out. Uh, uh, it doesn't look like they're going to retain Odell Beckham Jr. So this is a this division, which we were all hyped about, has tanked. The other division we were all hyped about tanked. And here we are. Yeah. Here we are with the AFC and the NFC East as the elite of football. Right. And, 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 you know, I mean, obviously we knew the Bills, everybody had them just giving them the Super Bowl before the season. And, you know, teams were obviously people were like, you know, high on what the Dolphins could be if everything worked out. But then you look at the Jets, you look at, you know, Belichick still just kind of grinding out wins with what he's got. And all of a sudden that division, NFC East kind of doing the same thing, surprising a lot of people. Uh, I think the NFC East, when you talk about the Giants, the Eagles, yeah, the Eagles were obviously on, on the radar and, and it was going to depend on if Hurts, you know, what could be better from last year, which he's been able to do up until, you know, this week. We'll see how they go the rest of the, you know, they got to play, you know, the legend Jeff Saturday coming up this week and the pressure will be on them to not look stupid against him. And then they've got Green Bay who, who feels confident the week after that. So, you you know, Philly, uh, then some more division games coming. So, uh, you know, but I'll tell you, in my opinion, when I just kind of look at it all, going back to San Francisco, I really think this is kind of the NFC is turning into more of a two-team favorite, maybe a third-team favorite race if somebody is actually for real out of that NFC East. But the more it looks like to me, when you look at paper and you look at teams that are committed to being the teams that they are and will be, and, and it's San Francisco and Tampa. And I, I really think that in the Ooh. NFC, Tampa, San Francisco and Tampa know who they are better than everybody else knows who they are. And maybe they had a few bumps in the road early. And then San Francisco had to get Garoppolo in there and, and acclimated. And Brady had to kind of come along with injuries to come along. Now he's got a great running game. And they both have defenses. No matter that, no matter that Brady's a seven-time Super Bowl winner and the greatest of all time. And Garoppolo is that guy that everybody thinks, can he, can he be good enough to win Look, they both have amazing defenses that can get them the ball, control field position, score points for them. And I really think it's a two-team race. And maybe if somebody from the NFC East is for real, uh, then maybe they can come in there and shock the world. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it's San Francisco and Tampa going down to the wire for that thing. Let me offer this up to you. I think the Vikings know who they are. I just don't trust Kirk Cousins. Yeah. I think in the Vikings, knowing who they are, they don't trust Kirk Cousins. Mm -hmm. And so as much as they've had such they've had an amazing season. Similar to the point. Eagles. They know who they are. But yes. is Jalen Hurts gonna the, be that guy? Yes. If you get behind, getting behind, I like Kirk Cousins more than I like uh, Jalen Hurts. But if the lights turn on in the stadium, I like Jalen Hurts and I don't yeah. like Kirk Cousins, mm -hmm. which is a weird, crazy mystery. But when we talk about teams who know who they are, I think the Vikings know who they are. They're the leadership of the team is what gives me unease. The leadership but, oh. in the Eagles organ in, in the Eagles locker room gives me unease, and the Vikings it gives me unease. Tom Brady, that team has so that team is so broken though. It is so know. broken. I don't, I don't know. I think I think you're going to see a Buccaneer team off this win in Germany get better. Really? I really do. Yeah, I do. I think you're going to see him get better. I think, you know, he's still got the receivers. Um, they've got to be better in the red zone. There's no doubt, but they got a great, they got a, they're getting great running games of late. 
They're they're playing to the pace that their defense dictates. I think they're only going to get better. That division, they're going to have division games, the clean clock down there, and 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 uh, finish strong. And yeah, I just think that when you have Brady and you have the weapons they have, and the, you have the defense playing at that high energy, pay that's a playoff defense. Mm-hmm. And, and that's a playoff running game. And if you have Tom mm-hmm. Brady, you have a playoff running game and a playoff defense, and you have Tom Brady in, in an NFC that isn't that great. It would be one thing if Devontae Adams was still in Green Bay and they were just cruising and lighting it up, or it'd be another thing if the if the if the Rams were the same team they were last year and just rolling it and just running it back and, and looking great and Stafford's doing his thing and Cooper, you know, isn't you know, isn't getting hurt and guys, you know. Yeah, it be that then maybe I'd sit there and go, this isn't a Tampa team, you know, this Tampa team, you know, it, but but they're a t- this is a Tampa team that l- probably loves what's happening around them in their surroundings. I'm gonna NFC. I'm gonna give you a dark horse right now that everybody's poo pooing. That's far that that's back, but not not Chicago Bears back. They're far back in the standings, but they're not last place back. I think the Arizona Cardinals are gonna hmm. figure out what's going on with them. Oh. The Arizona Cardinals. I think the Arizona Cardinals are going to figure out what's going on. with I Because th- I think they have a power struggle issue. I think there's a power struggle issue between the coach and the quarterback. And I think the coach is going to win that struggle for the time being. And when he does and gets Kyler Murray back on track, I think that offense is going to so the offense is going to look like what everyone thought it would look like. And you're going to find yourself looking at this division going, okay, who do I like more? Do I like the Cardinals more than I, at quarterback? Who do I like more at quarterback? The Cardinals, the 49ers, or the Seahawks? And the Seahawks will be third. And then it will come down to whether you trust Kyler Murray or Jimmy Garoppolo at the end of the day. And I think people will answer that with Kyler Murray. But again, that's a dark horse. I don't know. I think there's just a lot of maturity factors in the whole scheme of yes. it, right? I think yes. I think Arizona has a lot of growing up to do in a short time for you to yes. have that prediction come true. Do I believe that they have the growth period to be that team next year or in the next couple of years? I, I do. I think still Kyler Murray's a heck of an athlete and a great quarterback, and if they can get on the same page, do some really good things. But, but I think- it's going to have to be in the next couple of weeks, and it's gonna, we're going to have to out. find out tomorrow Ooh. because we've done this thing for one hour. Brown and Lawhead, it's never enough. We'll see y'all tomorrow, Wednesday. Peace, Mayor Tonight. Peace. Peace.